today. The pros fishing to make it to the final five who'll fish tomorrow for the $100,000 first prize. And the place where we're at this week, Jerry McKinnis, couldn't be any different from where we were the first time on Clewiston, Florida, on Lake Okeechobee. This, that place, you just needed a lake map. This place, this you need a map of the entire southeastern United States. A little more States. complex. <laughs> and it, this is just incredible. We've got, got a map trying to figure out where everybody's at. i tell you what you do. You read the list of the top ten guys. I'll do my best to uh, point out about where uh, they're going. We'll, we'll test you on that. Starting with number ten, Rob Kilby. He's fishing in the Pascagoula River. He's Oh, he's right here at home. He's only an hour away. David Cook. Same area. Same area for David. Randy Blockett. Randy Blockett just happened to run into some fish schooling close to home here, so he'll be fishing in the Pascagoula River. Marty Stone. Well, he's just fishing in Alabama. Maybe two and a half hours, three hours away from here. Running through the open gulf to get there. To get there. Roland Martin. Same thing with Roland. They're fishing a small area over there. They think they can catch a, a limit of fish in 15 minutes and turn around and make their way back. Gerald Swindle. Same place, Mobile Bay out of Al in Alabama. All-American champ Kim Carver. Kim's fishing up the Pascagoula River maybe an hour and a half from here. David Fritz, who's already won three times and, on the tour. And he's fishing fairly close to home. He's back in the Biloxi Bay, which maybe an hour from here. We have Roland Martin, and we also have Scott Martin in the field. The, though, those two and Greg Swindell, maybe even Marty Stone are almost fishing side by side in Alabama. And Randy Hall, our leader after the first two days. Randy was fishing in Venice, Louisiana, all the way, again, all the way across the uh, the ocean to his bass fishing spot. I don't believe he's going there today. He may go there tomorrow if he makes the finals. I believe he's fishing in Biloxi Bay. Now, a big story here is we always cover five guys, even on this third day action. How are we going to cover these guys who are going all over the globe, literally? Well, that's a problem. <laughs> I thought so. Matter of fact, some of these guys that we're covering up in uh, uh, Mobile Bay, you know, the, uh, uh, the camera guys and the boat operators have all got together and they're actually going to trailer their boats back out of here to Biloxi, all the way over to Mobile, launch their boats, and hopefully beat the guys going across. Because uh, it's predicted that there's going to be some high seas Four out there. Four to six swells. And so. uh, some people are just going to get really bounced around out there. So we thought the best plan, or they thought the best plan, would be to trailer with a GPS find the exact place where they were going to fish and just meet them right there. So our cameras are going by the roads, the, the, the fishermen are going by the water, and how much time are they going to have to fish when they get well, there? Well, okay, the cameramen, we're thinking, can get there in an hour and a half. The fishermen, depending on the water, uh, could be two and a half hours. If it was real good, it might be an hour and a half, but most likely it's going to be closer to two hours. They, they've got one little spot out there, Scott Martin and Roland and, and uh, Marty, and Swin you know, they've all told me they're just going to this one spot. Whip out a, a rattle trap, bam, 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 and, so, and sometimes they're catching their limit in 15, 20, 30 minutes. These guys got to be ready to roll. And know? then, then <laughs> they actually turn around and start making their way all the way back. We've had an interesting week. A lot of guys have tried that and and not made it back on time and and run aground and got in the fog and we've got an el a lot of elements to fight here. Like Jerry says, lots of elements to contend with today. And how about the wives of these anglers who are, who are out there dealing with all this stuff? These wives worry about those elements as well. Randy Howell, his wife, Robin, he thinks a lot about her. Oh, she loves it. She's the best, best thing for me, I tell you that. The Lord probably made one woman for me, and I'm glad I found her when I was in high school. So it makes it a lot easier to get an early start and have a good wife support me. And she backs the boat in, takes it out practices with me and it's just the best thing in the world so she loves it robin howell is liking today a whole lot more i think because randy is not going halfway across the gulf of mexico man he was so much to worry about <laughs> he was fishing off the radar screen right absolutely he? our fish are going to run small today these guys are really looking for one is. or two three or four pound fish to go along with a, with a, a little one they know it's going to be a small limit uh, they're catching most of them on jerk baits and lipless crank baits. Few of them on Point floating worms. All these fish are shallow, and and I say that they're going to be small. They have been in qualifying days. Uh, the fish are really affected by the tide. Some of the guys are catching more fish from uh, you know from noon to two o'clock. When you say affected by the tide, you mean that they're going to be in different places during different points in the tide? A absolutely. You know, I think these fish will bite all day long, but the tide moves them around, relax, moves the bait relax. around, and it's their their job, the fishermen's job, to figure out 
as always, it's their job to figure out where they win. Is that one gonna make it? Ooh, he skinned it right there. We'll take him for a little while. They better not have nothing right now. Well, not so much affected by tide at this point as Kim Carver. He's just affected by a little bitty channel, a tiny chute to get into the part of the river he wants to get into. He's going way up the, the Pascagoula, and then when he gets up to the, to, oh man, an hour away, I guess, that yeah. it, it takes some little chutes to get back into the, the pockets and the little uh, oxbows that he's fishing. Well, there they are, the camera crew we were driving with over there to Mobile. They've, they've made it. They're sitting ready to go, just waiting on anglers. I've only been here for about 30 minutes in the last two days. And I caught my three biggest fish on the first day in here, and I never came back here yesterday. Sometimes I make five or six casts to a log. I'm just throwing an old Bagley uh, Balsa B plug. This plug here is probably 20 years old. It's one of the old Tammy Balsa plugs. Probably similar to the old Big O. If the wind's blowing this hard out in the guff, I feel sorry for them boys. Well, he feels a little sorry, I think. Here they, uh, here they are right now. <laughs> this is the I-10 bridge, believe it or not, over Mobile Bay, and our guys seem to uh, found their way, and they're getting close to the fishing spot. That's also they? Highway 80 going across there, too, and I don't believe Kim feels sorry for him <laughs> one little bit. Uh, it was howling. I, I imagine the guys have waited nearly two hours uh, to pick up their fishermen, and kind of looks like Scott is feeling his way yeah. <laughs> underneath the bridge. A bit of a wrong turn. He looks like he's on it now. Good news, though. His fishing spot is in sight. Good news for Scott, anyway. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Walt. Always low prices, always. By BF Goodrich. Take control. By Black & Decker. Proud sponsor of the Walmart FLW Tour and by the Coca-Cola Company, always Coca-Cola. The Walmart FLW Tour Pascagoula River Tournament. This is Scott Martin. This is actually just the last 10 minutes of his journey from the Pascagoula River over to Mobile Bay. It looks okay here, but I assure you, it was rough out there in the bay as he ran across. David Fritz, on the other hand, well, he chose to avoid that altogether. A lot easier route for him. Hey, net back. Hey, That ain't what we're looking for either. I don't even think he'll make the grade. David Fritz, whom we really haven't seen as, as a factor in a tournament since back in 97 Man, when he won yeah, three I tournaments see. in the championship, although that was a heck of a year. Three yeah. years, and, and he's been in some top tens, uh, but this is his first five in uh, quite a little while, and, and as everyone knows, he's an outstanding angler. Well, he doesn't make it. Now, let me tell you what. I'm going to have to get rid of that one. He ain't even close to being the right one. Back to Mobile Bay, Scott and Roland Martin, both fishing now, thinking about that, but also thinking about that trip back. We might not be able to get back. You know that, Scott? We might not be able to get back. Uh, you don't think? I don't know. He's a baby. But it was a fish. Kim Carver and his partner there, Jimmy Bass from Melbourne, Florida. Kim's a gutsy little fisherman, isn't he, Tom? I really like the way he fishes. He kind of reminds me of the, of, the, of the baseball player that always figures some way to get on base or, or a little halfback that gets an extra yard all the time. He's just a gutsy little competitor. Got Where's a great he? record on the FLW yeah. Tour. He's there more he often than he's not there long. when it comes to the top hey. 10 or 20 places. What do you know? You're 12 inches long. Scott Martin may be, sh be showing us or starting to show us why he took this long trip, why he took the risk. 
Uh, he is, again, fishing a lipless Ooh. crankbait. They, they fish this bait because the it can cover a whole lot of territory. And he, you, you, Tommy, you might think that he's right out in the middle of the ocean there, but he's not. Uh, he's got a little break line that, that he will follow all the time. As a matter of fact, we'll start seeing the markers from time to time, but he's not just throwing anywhere. Thank he's you. got a good plan. I'd love to be on the board. Well, Randy Hall, I don't think I've ever seen you as shaken up as you were on that first day. Tell us something about that. Yeah, Tommy, I ran 110 miles to Venice, Louisiana the first day. And uh, out in the middle of the Gulf, the fog fell down, and uh, I lost power for some reason out in the waves. My Lawrence and Eagle GPS went out on me. And when that happened, I didn't have any way of knowing where land was, and I floated out for two and a half hours. Oh, my. And I uh, figured out finally by calling some people and found out how to get my hot wire uh, wired into the direct feed on the battery so I'd get power to my GPS. And it took two and a half hours. The fog was heavy, and we got it fixed, and we still ran an hour and a half and got to Venice at 12 o'clock. And I fished for two hours and caught 13 and a half pounds and came back. So uh, it still shook me up because I really had fear that I was going to get stuck out there all night. Nobody would ever find me. I was going to be like Gilligan out there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, why did you go all that way, and why are you not going there the past two days? Well, I've got two good friends, uh, Ross Watkins and Mark from Louisiana. They took me over there last Wednesday and showed me these couple little spots. And the fish over in that area are a lot bigger. They run three to five pound average in that area off the Mississippi River. And I know I can win the tournament over there without a doubt, but today you might can see the wind's blowing 20 mile an hour now and it's probably gonna get worse than that today. And I was going directly across the Gulf not around it, but straight across it in a bass boat. So that's not real smart to start with. What's happening right now? Right now, we're on this low tide. And the possible wind may be blowing some of this tide out. I don't know if it's blowing it in or out. But the water's too low, and these fish are looking to spawn in these pockets. And they can't get up on the bank good when it's low. So when the water gets up, yesterday I caught them from about 12 to 2 real good. So maybe I'll get better later on in the day. Back over to David Fritz and his co-angler partner. That is Daniel Fletcher from Newport, Arkansas, on the White River there. And we're talking, of course, to and about the pros a lot today. But uh, actually, this is the day for the co-anglers. This is their championship day. We haven't seen him do a whole lot yet. He ain't much. <laughs> Man, where are them chubs at? Bigger fish. Well, that'd be number three. Three fish for Kim Carver, who's trying to fish his way into the final round in this Walmart FLW Tour Championship on the Pascagoula River. Not much bigger, but a little bit. Kim Carver, that big, big win on the Upper Mississippi in the All-American Tournament, but the conditions here are a little bit different, aren't they, Kim? Yes, sir, they're uh, a little different. The water's a lot shallower here, and there's no smallmouth here. There's no smallmouth. <laughs> and and you're, uh, well, you know what, you're, you're close to home, and yet you're an hour away. Well, yeah, but actually, I grew up down here on the Pascagoula. Every summer, I'd come down and fish with my aunt and uncle down here, oh, up till I was about 15 years old. Well, I'll be doing Well, that. now, that's got to be an advantage, right? Yeah, I'm staying with my aunt down here and uh, my grandfather, and it's, it's a really exciting tournament for me. Home cooking and home fishing, and, man, Boy. you can't beat that. Well, <laughs> I only threw a red wiggler and crickets when I was down here before. Well, <laughs> I can't do that today. Have you actually fished some spots in the last couple of days that you would have fished many years ago as a youngster? I don't even know where I was many years ago as a youngster. <laughs> so it is no advantage. Yeah, it hey, is no advantage. I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> there, yeah. That was a lot of us in that boat. Yeah, I should say. Kim, I'll tell you what, you do like to fish with a crankbait, though. I do know that because I've fished with you before. Yeah, crankbait's one of my favorite ways. Of course, I, I try to be very versatile. This is the only thing I could catch the big ones on. and. Uh, there's two other boats in here during the tournament, and then neither one of them weighed over eight pounds for either day. And I came in here, and I've only spent 30 minutes in here uh, the first day of the tournament, caught three big fish. So I feel like it's, the crankbait's producing a bigger bite in here. What it, kind of crankbait are you actually fishing with? I'm fishing with a plug that's probably 20 years old. It's an old square bill DB3. Chartreuse Did you fish in the same place yesterday, Kim? No. You I, laid off of it? I stayed off of it yesterday. 
All right. If uh, you think that's going to be the case tomorrow, you'll be able to fish that place tomorrow? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of water up here, uh, plenty of fish. The fish haven't bit today. I really feel like I need to change strategies, but it's, I'm too far into the game to, to change right now. So I, if I get to fish tomorrow, I'm going to re-rig some new baits up and, you know, go at it maybe at a little different angle. But I'm not putting my crankbait down tomorrow. Back in Mobile Bay, that's Roland Martin up in the front of the boat. Back of the boat there, the co-angler Doug Caldwell, friend of mine from Kane, Pennsylvania. Nice Hello. guy. And he's hooked up with one. And he's a friend of yours, Tommy? Oh, yeah. He's from the same place, Jack Bell, who's on the pro side. Oh, that's fishes. right. These guys are good. Hey, well, remember, there's five boats out there that we're not covering, and these pros are just trying to, to survive this day and get to the finals. This is one of the only boats that, that I can that I've seen so far that throwing spinner baits and not the uh, lipless crank baits. I got one. I got one. Oh, Dad's got one. Oh, look at that one. He's got a huge one. Look at this one. Woo! Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Kind of interesting hearing Scott comment on his father's catch, which was a pretty good-sized fish, but Thank they you, are Thank practically in a, in a cast of each other. Fish, fish. Good one. Woo! And Tommy started looking at these sticks around the boats. Again, I want to point out that those sticks are kind of defining that brake line, and uh, there's a a drop off into Good six one. or eight feet of water and on the shallow side of the of the flats probably just two or three feet and well there's and, a, we're inside of the bridge remember and they do a lot of dredging and a lot of pulling out dirt and moving around and that's how this thing got set up one. years ago and you notice that uh, scott's fish are larger uh, on the on a the consistent basis than anybody to catch these fish unbelievable Good one. That's a good one, y'all. I don't know where he's. Yeah, he's a good one. If I can keep him out of the trash. You might never. Uh, you got him. I got you net. Oh man, that's a nice one, Ralph. They're on this side here. I might not have no choice where to bring him. <laughs> Get over here. Right. I, 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 oh, thank you. All right. Yeah. Man, that's a good one. That's what might win Ralph the tournament right there. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. what you're looking for. That's the kind of trout you're supposed to catch. Well, that's a pretty fish, there. A pretty fish. Now that I'm tied on. Them look like Georgia trouts there. Get that little worm. Yeah, I told you that would be one right on the inside. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that, too. That sandbar right on the inside that deep point. Might be where they're at out here on these little places. Huh? They're I just mean, laying around. He hit around. so light, I, could, I just barely yeah. felt him. And I had to keep feeling for him. It looked like he was just kind of hung there when he jerked. He didn't even move, did he? Yeah, yeah. And then he went back up there and got in that bush. And I said, oh, mm -hmm. no. One after that bush. I thought I already saw he was a good one. We crown a champion today from this list of co-anglers, and sometimes we don't pay enough attention to the back of the boat. These guys work hard though. Through the years, they have really had their moments. Big fish like this, they just make you shake all over. <laughs> there was a big fish today right there. Oh, that was a big fish of my life. I've definitely learned that I fish too fast. I think I don't stay in an area long enough to even figure out exactly what's going on there. So I'm going to keep those things in mind in the future. We've had some bad luck today. I don't know what's going on. Scott has had a spectacular year from the back of the boat along the Walmart FLW Tour all year long. Wow. 
why don't you take them and weigh them just for fun? Let's see. It's fish number five. Are you watching what uh, Jim fishes with and try to fish exactly like he does or fish exactly opposite that he does? Well, right at the second, I'm trying to fish like he is because he just pulled in two keepers, but... I'm sorry. It's, uh... Help me. Help me. This is really close. Oh boy, this is too close to call. This is, this is, what do you think? Hurry up, they're drying out. All right, hurry up. Let's put him in there. Six, eight wins, six, seven ties, six, six takes him. Second place, and let's check the weight. And the weight, six pounds, five ounces, air winner. Intense. This tournament is just meant for Chris Rand. I don't know what it is. I think there's a spirit here that really, really likes me a lot. Winner. Well, Chris Rand is a perfect example of how important this day really is for those poets. Well, that was then. This is now. And Ralph Wilson is trying hard to make the future highlights real, I guess. Got him, Ralph. Yeah, that's the keeper. A new one was on that sandbar. <laughs> That's what we're looking for right there. Woo. Carolina rig. I love it, I love it, I love it. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Coleman, the outdoor recreation company by Energizer. Energizer batteries and flashlights, the power to keep going and going. By Fuji, get the picture with Fuji film. And by Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. Now we can just catch us two good ones, about three pounds a piece. Won't be much weight. But the way the wind's blowing today, it's probably gonna hurt a lot of people. There he is. Oh, yeah. Much better fish. Oh, yeah. And look at there. The hook's just pulled off. You know, these All lakes right. that uh, Carver's fishing, they don't seem to have a lot of cover in it. There's a lot of sunken logs, though, and uh, Kim is trying to bump that crankbait that into like and that. over every log that he can find. Tom, you know there's a real art to fish in those crankbaits. Those guys, uh, I've said this before, those guys just don't throw them out there and reel them back in. Uh, that right. fish right, right there could have been his ticket to the finals, you know? Well, that's as good a fish as we've seen. That's going to go a long way today. Now we're in the hunt. Yes, sir. Good job. <laughs> we went from three pounds to five to eight pounds in a hurry. There's a lot of them right there. There's fish, fish on, fish on, fish on. Thank you. Is that three? Good. Three for Scott Martin, and he's starting to get rolling here, Jerry. Uh, he's hammered rolling, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said getting rolling, but he is getting rolling, too. <laughs> Those fish are moving up and down off that flat into that shallow water. You know, they're, they're just like uh, any other fish. Just because they're around that salt water, they're out there looking for looking for bait fish. Fish on. Fish on. Good one. Oh, boy. He's right here behind the boat. He's little. There's a stack of them. Scott is really starting to catch him now. And you know what happens, uh, Tommy, the, uh, in, in Roland's defense over there? You start watching the other fishermen catch fish and, and not focus on what you're doing. And it's hard not to do it. You know, I'd do it, you'd do it, anybody sure. in Roland's position would do that. And, and I think that's what's happened right now. He's paying more attention to his son than he is to himself. I got one on him. 
point at this point his partner may be falling into that trap as well he's watching well look uh, uh, Scott is he's in a real zone right now he's got a lot of confidence he knows the exact speed that that uh, little bait ought to be running he knows right where to throw it uh, thank you very much uh, there's just no pressure on him he's got a limit he's got everything going for him right now I like it I like it a lot nothing wrong with the limit this has been such an exciting tournament I mean the first two days I'm running 65 miles in fog and can't see anything and I don't see anything until I get right here had an hour yesterday to fish, catch my limit. It's gonna be an exciting ride back to the boat ramp. All right, Scott, tell me how long you're allowing yourself to get back to the weigh-in today now that the wind has come up and the conditions have deteriorated. Well, I've got about eight pounds. I've got a limit right now with about eight pounds. If I can get 10 pounds or 11 pounds, I'm gonna go ahead and leave. But if not, I'm gonna give myself probably close to three hours to get back just due to the wind. Even, even allowing that much time, are you genuinely concerned that you're going to be able to do it? Well, I think with three hours, it's plenty enough time. It, it only took us an hour and an hour and 40 minutes to get here, so that's almost double the time. So, uh, you know, if we go 20 miles an hour or so, just paddling through the waves, once we get through Mobile Bay, I think it'll be a little better. Hey, Scott, can you can you tell us how you originally found this spot? Well, this, this, this spot right here is a very popular place. A lot of the team tournaments are won right here over in Mobile. Uh, a couple of buddies that live up here, they told us about that the fish had moved in here. But it's a real popular place. There's a tournament tomorrow, a local tournament here in Mobile, and they said that there's probably going to be about 15 boats in this spot. There's a fish. Good one, too. Oh, man. Daniel Fletcher, who's the non-boater, the co-angler, as we call him, back there in the back of David Fritz's boat, he is still skunked. And, uh, David's catching a little bit better fish, but boy, he's got a long way to go, too. I'm not doing something right, because there's a bunch of big fish in here. Today is the only day I've caught small fish. These big fish are just, I don't know why they're not fit hitting. Where they're on the bed, I mean, tomorrow's a full moon, so tomorrow could be, you know, that could be a big factor. But something's going on. So what I need to do is figure out how to catch one more big one. Over to Randy Howell, who just hasn't had much luck in shallow water, so the solution may be to go a little shallower. He doesn't eat all the worm he wants. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't float up. There's one. Golly, look at that. Dang. Dang, that makes me mad. Might have been the same one. Boy, that stuff stinks, don't it? Can't get enough worm on fast enough to throw back in, and they bite the tail off every time. I'm scared to jerk too fast, because then they let it go. That's oh, three like that. Now look, biting it, biting it off. They know I'm throwing a five-alt hook, and they're biting it right at the five-alt hook bin. People say bass aren't smart. They're real smart today. They don't like, they don't like it because they don't. He was right there on that log, too. They don't get on Sports Center enough, so they're not going to bite until they can get on Sports Center. Put some garlic on them, because they might be Italians back here. <laughs> he come right off that log and blast I think they're rednecks. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely rednecks. They live in them trailers on high tide, and they live out here on low tide. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, you'd think if it was rednecks, Randy, they'd bite our worms. No, no, there's one. Got that one. All right. There we go. Good partner. Good Thank the Lord. Good lick. 
Thank you. Hold on. Oh, yeah. You're all right. I waited just a hair longer than he got it that time. One more for the home team. Not big, but we'll take him. Oh, yeah, that'd be big in my, my category. Probably good that we come on back through that mud now. That's three bites that quick. Could have had three fish if I could have hooked them all. One more and you're going to have me do it. Whether it's hooking them or not, it's always entertaining to watch Randy Hal. Now back to Scott Martin. He is culling fish. Now, earlier today, he told us Thank you, baby. he got around 10 pounds. He was going to go ahead and start his trip back home. It. He's catching them so good now, though, he may he may think twice. He may All stick right. around a while. We found another little wad up there. Let's see what happens. Fish. Oh, he's still on. He's still on. Oh, he... no, he's still on. I'll get him. I'll get him. We talked a little bit about Scott Martin's partner, wondered why he couldn't keep up with Scott. And, well, got him. and now Randy Howell, who's a heck of a bass fisherman, a good one, has got to be scratching his head, wondering the same know. thing about Ralph Wilson. Yeah, that's got to be good, wearing on his mind. It'd be 12 yeah, inches long. That's all the good as he had to be. All right. I think Ralph's gonna win the tournament, boys. It ain't no doubt. Did he come off? Did he come off? No. Oh, good. Okay. Thank now, you. He hit thank that you. worm as soon as it hit the bank. Hit, hit it. Hit, hit. He took off with it. That's a plucked worm bite there. That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's four. <laughs> He's waxing me. <laughs> oh, boom. All right. Just rig it Texas style, you know, is, is all you do. Just, and I like the green pumpkin color, and I like to put a little chartreuse on the tail. I don't know what they have here, but uh, at home, our brim are dark colored, and they got a tail, and it's chartreuse looking, you know what I mean? And so um, that's kind of what we, I don't know where that's has anything to do with it or not, but it, it has to do with the confidence, you know, and your confidence has a lot to do with it. I missed one back there, Randy. Did you? Yeah. Well, that didn't get him. I came in here so you could finish your lemon. Oh, well, I hope so. He just had to hold the tail of it. Probably a small one. I want you to finish your lemon real quick so I can go ahead and catch some in another spot. <laughs> yeah. He probably won't come back. Scott. Walmart FLW Tour this week fishing out of Pascagoula, Mississippi. These two anglers right there, Scott Martin and his partner, Alan Hultz, from just down the road in Gautier, Mississippi, have gone all the way to Mobile Bay here, and Alan Hultz finally getting something going. And Alan's the guy that could yeah. make a Scott, run at uh, Ralph Wilson, I think, just out. simply yeah. because, uh, like man, he's with five. Scott, and they're sitting on the biggest school in Alabama, I believe. Yeah, probably <laughs> they so. are around fish. Three. All right, number three for Allen. Well, oh, oh, Allen, don't do see that would have been fatal. It gets into politics when you I'll put your fish in the wrong live well. I was just testing y'all. I spent the first two days within five miles of the ramp twitching or following. Caught every fish I caught right there by the ramp. This is a lot different. There he is, Scott. Scott, good fish. Woo! So right. If I can ever get my rattle trap undone. You can put him in that side. I won't stop you. I think, I think Wesley's right. I might get a little bit nervous. Only 
might be just a little bit nervous. Nervous yeah, about a no, shootout between that. Ralph Wilson Most and himself. And Ralph now has Randy Howell changing baits. While Ralph continues to catch good fish. Call time. I hope so. Oh, golly. Dang, on. Come on, Ralph. Son. That cut hurt. That was a good fish. You see it? You yeah, saw him, didn't you? He was a good bit better than that other one. Yeah. A lot better than that, that one. There's Roland Martin. He's going to give up the fight here in Mobile Bay, at least for today. He may have a couple of places to hit on his way back closer to the takeout. He may be going to Ralph Wilson's home. Hey, that wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> Isn't that something? You know, I think Scott ought to start thinking about going home as well. He's just catching so many fish, so it's kind of hard to leave. But you know what? Now this time management really starts uh, playing into the game here. It's not just all about catching fish. It's uh, knowing exactly uh, how to handle your boat and how to get back on time. You know, the length of it, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the action or something, but I, I did better with the, with the trick than I did with the finesse. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you go with what... He ain't told me that all day. So even you give me a finesse. Well, I asked you. I said, "What did you want?" He says, "You wanted." To... <laughs> and you see, I've been fishing. <laughs> when I've been fishing, and oh. I don't know that it makes any difference. <laughs> I know. You know. I'm just mad. It's just. I'm just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. It's just the man on the other end, Randy. You know that. That's what it is. I know. <laughs> Look at here. Look at here. All right. Go ahead and catch another one, Cole. You got him. <laughs> he got him. I'm going to put me a trick worm on. <laughs> got him out of here. <laughs> Ain't this something? Ain't this something? <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> He's bigger than that other one, I think. Yeah, ain't that something? Look at that. Ain't them pretty trouts? <laughs> People on TV are going to think they're trout. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, in South Georgia... It's called a green trout, right? No. When I was a kid... Everybody down there called a bass a trout. You know? Give me a doggone trick worm. <laughs> okay. Put one on my hook right quick. Well, Shoot, look in that, get him. in that box there, and there's a, some in that box right there yeah. somewhere. Randy Howell, you can't blame him. Finally going with the, if you can't beat him, join him. Scott Martin now headed back across the Gulf to Mississippi. <laughs> Here at the tent, it is way in time. What a crowd we have here in Pascagoula, Mississippi. A huge crowd, and these folks are really, really into their bass fishing. We've weighed in six co-anglers so far. Actually, we weighed in seven now. Our leader at this point is Danny Strand from Champaign, Illinois. Danny has got six pounds, two ounces of bass. Please welcome from Gautier, Mississippi, Alan Holt. Pretty good. All right. Let's get around this way, Alan. Uh, that is amazing. All right, you know the job to do. Six pounds, two ounces, Danny Strand's got. Got to have six three to take over the lead. Let's pull him out, get started. There's number one. Here comes fish number two. I'm getting nervous, Danny. Hey, oh, there's number three. That's a little better fish. There's fish number three. He's reaching again. Pull him out. There he is, number four. That's it, four fish. Let's watch the scales real closely here. This could be close. Got to get six pounds, three ounces to take over the lead. Four fish, all four of these are alive. Total weight here, six pounds, 14 ounces of the leader. Wow, this is fun. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. 
I never seen any any place react like this on, on the Friday weigh-in. That's great. I'm glad for all the people who came out to support the tournament. This has been a first-class deal. It's the first FLW ever fished. I guarantee you it won't be the last. You've got one more man between you and $15,000 and a shot at the year-end championship, but he is the guy that caught the most fish, the most weight over the last two days. Yep. Let's step up close where we can check this weight. But this one might very well do it. He has a limit of fish. Five, is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Our only limit of the day. Five fish, all alive. Eight pounds, nine ounces, a winner. <laughs> Ralph Wilson, Carolina rigging out there. What are you doing Carolina rigging here in southern Mississippi? That's all I know how to do. <laughs> it worked pretty good for you today. It worked excellent the last two days. It sure has. Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Landa Lakes, supporting family traditions. By Mitchell, redefining tradition. By Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. And by Timex, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. This week on the Walmart FLW Tour, our Fuji film flashback could well have been Ralph Wilson's big fish. That was nice, but we're going to go with this one right here, the nice bass that Kim Carver caught way up the Pascagoula River here, the fish that put him into the final five. We're going to fish for the championship on the Pascagoula River here. Charlie Evans is standing by to introduce us to all five angles. One of these five guys is going to walk away with $100,000, and it might be Rob Kilby from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Could be Gerald Swindell from Warrior, Alabama. Five Five fish. Pretty strong. Or possibly Kim Carver from Milledgeville, Georgia. I'm looking for four and eight. That's a monster. I caught every fish this week throwing a crankbait. I'm just throwing, uh, cranking real slowly around a lot of wood. I'm fishing, you know, I have to make multiple casts to the uh, spots I'm fishing. It's just been real hard and real slow, and I'm not getting a lot of bites, but I have gotten a lot of good bites this week. Maybe Marty Stone from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Five bass limit. Ooh, looking good. I've been catching on two baits. One was the same bait that I, I did real well at Okeechobee. It's a gambler spinner bait. It's a prototype that I've been working on with gambler baits. And the others, I've, I've got on some fish with a, a rattling vibe Yozuri crankbait. It's just a lipless crankbait. But those are the two, same two baits did well at Okeechobee, same two I'm doing here, and it's the same situation, I'm fishing grass. Well, the champion might be Scott Martin from Clewiston, Florida. Fishing right across the pond from him over there, number three. Steadiest, most solid performer last year on the co-angler side on the Walmart FLW Tour, made you co-angler of the year. You couldn't wait to get out here on the angler side. No, I, and I'm glad I did the co-angler. If there's anybody out there that's thinking about fishing the pro side, I definitely recommend going through the co-angler. I learned a lot. You, you see how different people fish. You know, you're never going to learn anything new unless you go with somebody else and see what they're doing because you're only going to know what you know. And so I learned a lot last year, and it gave me a lot of confidence and seeing how things work. And so I feel real comfortable. I, I wasn't nervous at all today. I, when, it, when I started this tournament, or I started this year, my goal was to make one top ten. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. In the world are here, they're looking for action as well. And here are our five finalists today. Guys, welcome to the Austin Police Casino, and who wants to win? I've been fishing FLW for a year and a half now. This is my first top five finish. I want to win. Tomorrow I'm going to roll the dice, or I'm going to basically push everything out there and go for broke tomorrow, because I don't have anything left to, to wait for. It. Well, who I'm really watching out for in this poker game tonight is Marty Stone. The roommate, I know the boy. He's evil. He's got a weak side to him. He don't want to lose to me now. He don't want to give it up. I'm going to tell you what, he's right. We room together, and it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. We really, we bear it down, and we get serious about it. But you better watch. I'm going to risk it all. I mean, I, I've risked it the last three days. And I'm just going to let it ride. I'm just going to let it ride, and I'm going to try to take all their money. I'm going to try to take all their lures tonight, so that way I can definitely beat them. I won't have a problem if I can take all their lures. They don't have anything to fish with. 
Hi, and welcome. It's this week's stop on the Walmart FLW Tour. First stop ever on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. The launch is underway. This is the fourth and final day of fishing. We started out with 150 anglers. We're down to five now who are going to fish for the championship and the $100,000 first prize. And I can safely say this is a tournament unlike any you have ever seen before. Y'all ready to get them? Let's go get Flipper. Just fall right in behind me. You won't be out no problem. I'm Tommy Sanders. Jerry McKinnis lifting off in the chopper. And Jerry, you ought to be able to show us why this tournament is so different. Uh, Tommy, you ought to see it from up here. Man, we've been talking about this site on ground all week long, and it's really exciting to be up here and actually look at this incredible fishery. You know, we have five guys out there, uh, as always. One of them went up to Biloxi, Biloxi Bay. Uh, Biloxi's probably a half hour from us uh, by vehicle and by boat is probably an hour. Uh, Kim Carver is headed up the Pascagoula River. We'll catch up with him just a little bit later on. But right now, I am headed for the Gulf. In fact, I'm looking at the Gulf of Mexico right now, the Mississippi coast, and we've got three guys that are braving the coast going towards Alabama. Now, there are a lot of fish in this giant area here, but they're very congregated. Uh, these guys have been fighting it all week long, and they finally got it zeroed in. It looks like now it's a case of being able to get to these little spots and make it back on time. Well, Jerry, those three guys who are headed across the open gulf over to Alabama to fish are Marty Stone, his second top five in his many tournaments this year on the Walmart FLW Tour. Gerald Swindle, who is from Alabama, a $150,000 winner a couple of years ago at the Walmart Open. Scott Martin, last year's co-angler of the year, making a great debut on the pro side. Heading up the Biloxi River is Rob Kilby from Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. And the only man fishing in the Pascagoula River is Kim Carver of Milledgeville, Georgia. A whole lot of logs running this morning. We already passed a half a dozen just out in the middle out here. Kind of hard to understand there. That is the muffled voice of Kim Carver telling us about floating logs along the 60 or 70 so mile trip up the Pascagoula River. It is a treacherous trip. It's very wild river, fairly undeveloped in this area. The river itself, well, it's not loaded with bass, but after days of searching, Kim has managed to find a few oxbow lakes off the river that are productive enough to, uh, well, to get him into the final five anyway. Man, oh man, what a fisherman won't do to win an FLW Tour event across the Gulf or shoot up a narrow channel like this when all in search of a largemouth bass. I said there's a five-pounder sitting right there. Well, I'd like to get her. <clears throat> With this water down so low, they get real skittish, and they don't want to bite. You can see them. Rob Kilby throwing plastic grubs on very light line, talking about the skittish fish. They're in and around these fish that are bedding, and this pattern, well, it's worked all week for him. It's even gotten better, or so it seems. It's just that, you know, the male fish are so much more aggressive under these conditions, easier to catch, and they're always so much smaller than the females. That's the frustrating part about it. Some of these pockets like this one Rob's in can have as many as 50 or 60 of those fish milling around either on the beds or getting the beds ready or ready to move up on the bed. So you proceed very carefully because when there's that many fish, a few of them Finally. can weigh five or six pounds. Well, you gotta have one before you have two. Mm -mm -mm. Rob Kilby's our only guy left fishing in the Biloxi River this week, but during the week, during the four days of fishing, a lot of people chose to go up there, didn't they, Rob? There was quite a few people up here running around. Uh, you know, I don't know, they, they didn't do a whole lot of catching, but there's a lot of people up here fishing. Well, what's the, what's the attraction up there? What are, you, what are you trying to fish? What kind of structure up there? Tommy, what I'm fishing is, a, it's a marsh area, and in this marsh, out in front of this marsh grass, in some just real small areas, there's uh, some eelgrass, and that's the key. Uh, these fish are staging, uh, getting ready to spawn, and they're 
this, they're attracted to this eelgrass, and you know I've caught them differently every day, but I've caught them every day out of the eelgrass. Yeah, you don't see any beds yet. They're not actually spawning yet, then, huh? Well, uh, my best little grass line around the corner, uh, there's a pocket at the end of it, and I fished down through it yesterday, and I only caught two, and I couldn't figure out what happened to the fish, and I went up in this little pocket, and they're swimming around in there everywhere, bedding. So I hadn't made it to there yet, but I'm going to go here in a minute. That's where the jackpot's going to be, huh? I hope. <laughs> well, you really weren't expecting to be in the top ten. Did you, did you have a better feeling about making the top five as you did yesterday? Well, you know, I'm covering so much water. These other guys are, are fishing holes, you know, and they're catching a lot of fish out of one spot. And I'm, I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. I just catch one here, one there, and uh, covering a lot of water. And there's not a lot of people up here using this water. So, you know, I kind of think the advantage is to my, uh, in my way because I can't really burn out one hole. Yeah. Well, tell us more about the differences between fishing this and, and the type of tournaments most people fish where they get to keep their weight from one day to the next. It's a whole different ball game where you got to start anew each day, isn't it? That's exactly right. I, I really think uh, it's extremely important to be able to have fresh water all the way through an event like this. Uh, you know, I'm fishing for new fish all the time. So where if you get stuck fishing in a hole, uh, you, you tend to, there's not many places that'll hold up for four days in a row. Right across the open gulf today, not as bad as it has been the last couple of days? No, it was a piece of cake today. All right, Rob, thank you. Thank you, Tommy. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always. By Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Sitco, you know me. And by Coleman, the outdoor recreation company. You may be wondering why we've only seen two anglers so far. Jerry McKinnis tried to follow our other three. They're going across the Gulf to Mobile Bay, so we won't be seeing them fishing for a while yet. Kim Carver has gone up the Pascagoula River, and that's no piece of cake either. But Jerry McKinnis uh, in the well, chopper has fact, located it. Why don't you kind of describe your trip up the river this morning? And how on earth did you find this place? I was lost. But now I'm found. Jerry, coming up the river this morning was pretty bad because the water's real low. It looks like the water's down about 18 inches from where it was yesterday, so it made it a lot more dangerous. Had to really pay attention, but we didn't, we were lucky enough we didn't hit anything. Uh, it, it really explained to me how you're fishing this oxbow. Well, the only thing I've caught a fish on is, is cranking a uh, square bill uh, Bagley's DB3 around shallow wood. Today I haven't had a bite. And I'm just, you know, going down the banks. Kim, I understand that uh, that you uh, actually fished in this part of the world as a youngster, but this is, for the most part, this is all new to you, right? Oh, yeah. Er everything's new to me, Jerry. I, we're talking 14 years old with red wigglers and a cricket. So, you know, I've never been up here before uh, four days ago. Kim, are these, uh, I noticed a couple other boats in here fishing. Doesn't look, really look like they're bass fishing. Are they any, any problem for you? No, they're just, uh, they're fishing for crappy today. Uh, they're just out having a good Saturday afternoon, enjoying a beautiful day, you know, and they're, even if they were fishing for bass, it's all public water. Well, Jerry, we hate to leave you and Kim, but Rob Kilby has now made his way to that honey hole he spoke of earlier. He God, spotted some fish in about it. a foot of water. He's working on them, or maybe <laughs> they're working on his mind. Well, this is side fishing, folks. It's one of the most interesting kinds of fishing to watch. And probably one of the most frustrating kinds of fishing to actually practice. He's put that little grub right up on the bank there. He spotted a bed, and he sees a fish on that bed. But what that fish is interested more than anything is grabbing that bait and flinging it off the bed area. He's not interested in eating it. Well, this could be so frustrating, and you wonder if Rob has the patience to make this thing happen.
let's see. It took about three shots at this fish, but Kilby may have scored here. And again, these are small male bass, but putting five of them in the boat, so important today. And again, so difficult because they actually have to eat the bait. A lot of times when you're fishing in this fashion, you will accidentally snag one outside the mouth. If you do that, that fish does not count. He must Better. go back no matter what his size. Mm. Huh? <sighs> The same one that I jerked at three times. They're just not, they're not real aggressive. They're real spooky and it's a, this is a terrible way to fish. <laughs> Nerve wracking. I don't like this rod that just plugs on. This was my spare backup. And this other plug just don't feel right this morning for some reason. So we're just gonna change for a little while see if it makes a difference. Same style, same bait, same manufacturer. So the paint's wore off of that. Yep. Joel Heim will be fishing. So I'm going to turn this point right here and hold real close. You see that clump of weeds in the back? I'm going to be stopped as far as I can out here throwing to it. So when y'all pull in, just kind of stay right in the middle and just turn. I'll come right back up that other bank. Well, his long, rough ride across Gulf water over, Gerald Swindle has finally made it to Mobile Bay, and he's fishing. And he's fishing just exactly like Rob Kilby was fishing, fishing in these bowling. flats around a lot of grass, fishing for spawning fish. And Tommy, as we all find out, Gerald is a very quiet, very unemotional <laughs> fisherman. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> he missed it. Huh? Come on. Of grass right out there. There's one out there. Pike. Wow. It's been a ritual. Every day I've been over here, the first fish I catch is a pike. Well, you know, Gerald will zero in eventually on the right species here, but until he does, let's switch over to Marty Stone, who, like everyone else, is looking for cover, which is coming for him, at least in the form of grass. Let's show you what we're talking about. This right here is called coontail moss. Don't know how in the world other than a, maybe like a little raccoon's tail right there, but that's the whole deal. And see how some of it's brown, but most of it's turning green? That's where they're living. There he is. Well, there you go, Marty Stone's first fish of the day, and that's got to be frustrating, Jerry. I mean, you, you travel in the boat for two hours, then you have to fish a while, so long before you score one. Yeah, really and, and you, in the back of your mind, you know you've got to hurry and make your way back. And these guys are all fishing uh, lipless crankbaits, which allows them to cover a lot of water in a, in a short amount of time. So that's good. And a, a lipless crankbait is a crankbait without a lip on it that is going to pull it down into some depth or pull it down into the grass. You, normally the, the line tie is up on the back, which pulls the bait up uh, on, its, uh, on its nose and, and kind of makes it weedless as it's coming through the water. But uh, this is a great bait to fish this grass. Not much, but it's a start. And finally, Scott Martin is set up and fishing. And he's fishing the same thing, Tommy, a, a, a lipless crankbait. He's, he's fishing his a little bit different. He's actually not in the grass. He's, he's bumping his off the bottom. Well, we just went 65 miles across Mobile Bay. The wind was still pretty bad today. Took a beat, and one of our camera boats broke down, so we had to pile everybody in here. And that took a little bit of time. And since we've gotten here, there's quite a few boats on the, on the spot today. There's a local tournament over here today. I figured there'd be some boats in here. They're fishing some club tournaments and stuff. So hopefully some of these guys will give me a little bit of room in here. It's not as bad as I thought. I figured there'd be about 10 boats in here. It looks like there's only really one other guy fishing hard. Hopefully they'll leave me alone. And I've got about four different spots in here that I can hit. I, I feel like I can get a limit. I've already caught one real small one. If I can get, uh, if I can keep it, if I can keep it to myself hit these spots and catch these fish. I got a real good shot at it. What you want to do is watch Scott's action with his rod. Uh, he's allowing that bait to go on the bottom, and then he's actually jerking it back up off the top. And 
hit the bottom, jerk it back off the off the bottom. Fish just can't stand that. Oh, I got a good one on here. I got a good one on. I don't know what. Oh my goodness gracious! Woo! This is the biggest one I've seen in here ever. Almighty, love it. Look at that one. Yes. No need of measuring that one. Oh my goodness. I might have to take a break after that one. Oh. This is such an adrenaline rush. You make this long run over here. You don't know if you're going to make it. You don't know if you're going to break down. You get all the way over here and you catch fish. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Woo! Oh, I got chills. That's a huge fish right there. That's a huge fish. Oh, my goodness. I didn't expect to catch one that big in here at all. That's unbelievable. Oh, God. Oh. All right. I'm shaking. And I ain't caught a fish on a spinnerbait since I've been at this stinking place, but I got a gut feeling. While I'm waiting on the tide to go out, I may catch a couple on it. And I don't ever deny the gut feeling, so I'm gonna try it. And I ain't caught one on it. Entire practice, the entire tournament. So if I catch one, this will be the first. I guess it's just something that's not done a lot in this area. There's one right there. Come on, baby! Uh, 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 uh. Oh, 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 oh. Easy. Easy. Come to pop. Woo -hoo -hoo. That'll give us a little something for the home team there anyway. To everybody back home. <laughs> I have scored on a spinnerbait. I tell you, that's that's the neat thing about bass fishing that I enjoy so much throughout my career. Every day that you're on the water. The only limit to what you can catch or what you can conquer is, is your imagination and your mind. And by saying that, I mean, I've been to this place five or six days fishing in this Mobile Delta. And I have not caught a bass on a spinnerbait yet. I, I had no reason to even throw it today. Pick it up, had a gut feeling, start fishing. I've already had one strike and I caught one. So we're going to turn the live well on auto. Let's see if it'll keep biting. It's just a gut feeling. And what I'm trying to do is buy time. And if you've never felt fished any kind of tidal water, what I mean by buying time is I'm looking for a primary low tide. I want the last hour of the outgoing or the first hour of the incoming. And the reason I need that in this particular area is I'm fishing a big spawning flat. And what I say by spawning flat is this is where these fish get up on in the early spring and start to bed, start to actually look for food and feed up and get ready. And that's what's behind me right here. This is all a flat. This is two and three foot. And right in this location by the wood line, that's a 20 foot hole. That's where the fish can stay during the winter or even on a low tide. And as the tide starts to fall, these fish are in this marsh and already up here, they'll back right on the edge of the ditch or these points. And that's when I can catch them the fastest. But right now, you know, I, I haven't been over here this early yet, so right now I'm actually fishing the first hour and a half, two hours of the outgoing. So we're gonna buy a little time. So that's what I mean when I say I'm gonna buy a little time. I'm gonna throw a spinnerbait. Look for a couple of key bites like that. If I get those, that's just a bonus, but it was a gut feeling to throw it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish up in this ditch about 50 or 60 more foot and see if it'll pay off. Oh, my goodness. I've gotta settle down. 
Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Evan Root Outboards and Electrics, the world's most refined engines. By Poulin, the name means quality. By Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. By Shopback, the only thing more powerful is our name. These events are not without their rules and regulations, as Marty Stone started. will point out fishing. here. Yeah, fishing that turn for 100 grand today. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna stay here all day. I'm either gonna win or lose in here. I can't talk to you about fishing though, but thank you, because it's against the rules. But good luck to y'all today. The rules are rules, and these guys are really intense about them. Right now, let's switch gears a little bit and go back to the qualifying days of this tournament and check how our former Anglers of the Year made out. There's 1996 Angler of the Year, Peter Filveros. David Walker is the current reigning Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year from 1999. Clark Winland from Cedar Park, Texas, our Angler of the Year from 1997, the second year of the tournament. And, of course, everyone knows this fellow right here, Denny Brower, our Angler of the Year from 1998. And it just so happens that in my hand, I have the current leaders for Angler of the Year after two events, of course, a long time to go. But Marty Stone's right on top. We're having a good look at, at Mr. Stone today. Gerald Swindell is right behind him. And then comes Randy Howell. Clark Wendland is um, at it again, Tommy. And two anglers from Arkansas very much in the Angler of the Year points race. Bob Sanders and Stephen Browning. Again, the points are accumulated based on your fishing in the first two days of the tournament. That's Wednesday and Thursday. Well, let's take a look at some of the results from those qualifying days. A lot of the biggest names in the sport did not do so well. There are a lot of different elements to contend with here in Mississippi. Our list of notables includes David Fritz. You see there, a great weight after two days, 21 pounds, 4 ounces. Just under him, Bernie Schultz, 14.10. And the Mississippi native, Paul Elias, a good first two days. Matter of fact, Paul Elias had one of the largest stringers that first day. Kind of bombed out on the second day, though. Fritz was within a few pounds of being with us today, but our big story is Scott Martin's big fish. Man, when he come up and jump, I about freaked out. I thought it was a red fish. And I saw his head go, Another fish. Another good, another good one. Well, wasn't as good as that other one. But it adds up. I'm just hoping this tide leaves. I can already tell if it don't. And the bad thing is we got what they call a, I think they call it a, a nip tide today, meaning it's going to hit a certain point. It's not going to do anything else. And that's not good. Ooh, there's one. Marty Stone, as we mentioned, having a great year. What makes him so good, and why is he oh, doing so well this year? You know, I think he's just a real consistent angler, and he fishes crankbaits very well. Of course, again, this is a lipless crankbait, and, and Marty's idea of the right presentation is to actually hang that lure up in the grass, and then he will jerk it and pull it off the grass, and if a fish is right there in the area, he sees it, jump off that grass, and boy, he's all over it. See, they're still not eating it yet, though. He, did, he had it on the side of the mouth, outside of the mouth. They're just swatting at it. But think about this. We just come down through this area a second ago. Nothing. Now we come down through here, catch two fish. Marty's fishing grass. Carver's fishing wood. They're 100 miles apart, but they're still looking for cover. There he is. Oh, yeah. And they say one. Kim Carver, former All-American champion. So you know he's good enough. He doesn't have to stay on goose egg forever. Oh. And he hit like the big ones have been hitting. There it is. All right, now. That's why I'm looking for, for fish up here. We don't need many. Hey! Can you hear us okay? Yeah, if y'all don't mind, I'm gonna catch this fish first. I think I've got a good one. All right, yeah. 
Marty, we're going to talk to you while you catch this one, okay? Well, y'all go ahead and talk and don't mind me if I don't say nothing. Okay, okay. that's all right. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. All right, Marty Stone with another hookup here. Yeah, Marty, is this you. the one you've been looking for? Yes, it is. This is the one? Yes. Oh, man. A little, a little bit of... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that's a thrill, isn't it? That's a high right there if there was one. I've been standing in this ditch all day saying I need a three-pounder. It's not quite three, but two and a half are counting my book any day of the week. Well, you know, you guys are catching lots of small fish, lots of uh, 14, 15-ounce fish, and everyone says every day, you know, if I could just get one really good one, and maybe Marty's done it here. Yeah, Marty, how much more time do you have to fish, realistically? Well, I got about an hour and a half, and I tell you what, it's really been... It's been a frustrating deal for me so far today. I started out and I had a limit of nothing but of, of 12 inch fish. And I said, well, if I stay here to midnight, I might end up catching a good one. And the next <laughs> thing you know, I, I all but talked myself into leaving. Wow. And um, I catch a pound and a half or and I catch another pound and a half or so they're growing up on me. All right. Hey, you know what, Marty, while you're, while you're on that subject, this is all about decisions. And, and you just hit on something there that's really important. You're right on the verge of making a, a decision that might have just wiped you out. Uh, uh, back up to that point. Boy, that, that's a great point there, Jerry. I tell you what, the last two tournaments I've had on FLW Trail, it, it's all been about making good decisions. And you get in those grooves, and you're right. The, the difference in winning and losing a lot of time is, is, is the decision you make, whether to leave, whether to stay. It was, it was pretty funny. The second day of the tournament, um, I only had an hour and a half to fish up here. I'm out of breath, pardon me. <laughs> but um, I only had about an hour and a half to fish once we made this massive run. Went through uh, one of the better areas my roommate and myself, Gerald Swindle, found. Fished 30 minutes. Didn't get a bite. I had another little area I was going to go check out. I turned out of there and I saw, man, the fog is just covered up. I come into this area I'm at now. Never been in here a minute in my life. Gerald, the last day of practice, found these fish in about the last 45 minutes of practice. He said, Stoney, you getting a bind? Let's go in there and take a look at it. He got two or three little bites. We really didn't know what we had, so I said, it's closer to the ramp. I won't have to fight the fog. I come in here, I catch 10 pounds in about 50 minutes. Yesterday, I come in here and caught what I had in about another 50 minutes to an hour. So it's all about decisions. And so far, I made a couple good ones. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, you and uh, uh, Gerald Swindell. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Um, we've been roommates now. It's sort of funny. We started rooming. The, the very first tournament that we started rooming together was Beaver Lake, the one that he won. And oh, really? And that yeah. was a neat deal, too, because I'd actually found those fish in, in the area. And I mean, it was a pretty large area, and I told him about it. And I should have made the top ten with yeah, you. Yeah, you broke down, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, no, he ended up breaking down. I just <laughs> I broke down, couldn't catch the fish. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's a breakdown. That's but, a breakdown. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's one of those, we have just an unconditional trust. There's no ego involved. I, I personally think he's one of the greatest fishermen I've ever been around, bar none. He's got so much natural talent, it's scary. But the thing that really makes it work for us, like I said, the trust factor's there. I know if he tells me something, it's the gospel. He knows the same. And we got one rule. If I found him, he's found him. If he's found him, I found him. That way, hopefully, we can keep from struggling. Now, every now and then, you get in a situation where it's just as much a small area. We can't really share. But then, then we know when to back off. We have reports of Shamu the whale in Baymanette Basin in Mobile, Alabama. I've been hired by the FLW fishing staff to come out here and search for him and seek him out. It's a $10,000 reward if I can bring him in. But it has to be Shamu. I can find him. You seen the crocodile hunter? I'm Shamu the whale hunter. Here we go, boys. This could be it if I can get this fish in and get this fired up right here on this point. We can do it. We can do it, I'm telling you. Let's get him working right here to the boat. Boy, he's, he's a puller right there. It's Jim Moyne, you'd say. We'll get these fish biting right here. It'll be over. It'll be over, Jim. Hello, Jimmy. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and put this bad boy in the live one right here. That's a good sign, guys. I ain't had a bite on a rattle trap all morning. I pull right back to this point where the fish are at. Move right there to it, and they start biting. I mean, usually if I can get them to bite it, Take just a few minutes. This is 
called the, the dance of the broken neck. Okay, now I've got to touch it. There he is. Oh, boy. Oh! Felt good. There he is. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Welcome back. It's the Walmart Fish FLW on. Tour. This week's stop on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We are watching our leader, Scott Martin, fishing in a place called John's Bend in Mobile Bay. It's on the Blakely River. He's just north of the Highway 10 Bridge, and he keeps putting more fish in the box. Man, they make me nervous. That helped me a little bit. Some buddies of mine that live live around here, they, they know they can watch from that pier, so what better place to be? It's kind of cool. Everybody hooting and hollering want to catch one. Pretty neat. There's one. Oh, this is a bass. It's going to be another big one. Feels like a redfish, though. But I can't tell. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. talking about it's my fan club I got chills going up and down my back my neck my back and my neck Scott Martin will let you calm down for just a moment there. He's a young family man. Right now, let's meet another competitor's wife who really works to survive those qualifying days. I love it. I really do. You know, sometimes I get tired of being gone for so long. If we're on the road for a month or so, I really get tired. But once I get home, get caught up on my work, I really get bored. We get a lot of questions like, well, where do you stay, you know? And I try to find places places that resemble a house, a condo, a cabin, something that makes you feel at home. If we stay in a hotel room, I have to be able to cook in a skillet. It feels like that helps him relax more. She keeps me fed good all week. You know, if he makes the top 10, he doesn't eat as much. They're always asking me, what do you do all day? I didn't tell y'all I tutor, did I? I'm really busy. I, I get his messages and I return phone call messages. Anything that I can take care of hey, that he doesn't have to take yeah, his time. Keep his fine. website updated. Then she does a lot of praying for me. I keep um, all of his sponsors updated on what he's done each month. I've got 12 or 13 sponsors that she keeps monthly reports and newsletters sent to. And so they know that he's working while they're paying him. One of the greatest young fishermen in the world right here. Randy Howell. Randy Howell. The boy is definitely in the looking sharp. He's just got to have everything just right, from the hair to the shirt tail. My shirt tail's straight. This is a big shirt. To the hat. Oh, the hat is a must. It has to be straight, perfectly straight. And the socks have to match. The pants have to match. It's just got to be all just right. He's the best best thing for me, I tell you that. He is a handful. He definitely is. But he's a good handful. Oh, oh, think he's going to make it? Oh, I hope that doesn't happen to us. Another fish. I tell you what, Jerry, Woo! some tournaments, being able to drive the boat well and getting some breaks while you're driving a boat are more important than others. This is one of those oh, tournaments this right This is here. one. Of, just think of this. Uh, Scott has probably got the winning string of fish in his boat. Oh, man. But we just saw a boat beached out there, and that very same thing could happen to Scott if he's not real careful. Plus that long trip across the gulf. Man, he's got to row the hoe. That helped me. That helped me. I like those guys. 
Hey, you can like just I'll about anything when you're, right. when you're lapping the field like Scott Martin is. And, you know, it's going to be really tough for anybody to catch Scott because this, these waters do not produce lots of big fish. And I think Slowly he getting caught there. the only big fish, so he's going to be a hard guy to beat. First trip to the Mississippi Gulf Coast or, or any really seacoast type area for the Walmart FLW Tour. And, uh, you know, even though we're fishing for freshwater fish for largemouth bass, salt water. you got to deal with salt water. Each so that's one why of these, these shrimp boats are behind See, now all right, you got it all, all right. figured out. <laughs> you got to deal with salt water sometime or another, don't you? Yes. Yes, yes, you do. In fact, you had a you had a, a, a very close encounter with the saltwater fish yesterday, right? We had a big redfish hit, and I, I thought it was a big old bass, and and uh, yeah, I, I caught it. it was about a four pound redfish. So there is a lot of neat stuff out here. I'm catching oysters. I'm catching crabs. Well, listen, you're obviously having a great day. How about describing that little place that you have camped on for four days? Well, what it is, it's a lake. This uh, Mobile Bay is a super shallow lake, uh, bay, and there's not very much deep water. This is probably one of the deepest spots in this whole bay, and we're on a mud flat. You have to, you have to be real careful getting in here. You have to go over a mud flat for about a half a mile to get in here, and we're in 12 foot of water right now, and I'm throwing up on about a foot and a half and ripping this rattle trap across that mud, and fish are hitting it. They're up there eating crabs. They're eating crabs. They Bass eat, are eating crabs. They eat crabs. Every, every day I've had a, a fish cough up a crab. Oh my gosh, shrimp too. I guess they eat all the salt water. Stuff, yeah, right? yeah. You know, there's some bait in here too, but I really think they think this thing's a crab. Well, do you think they're moving around in there a lot, Scott? Uh, I know, I know. You talk about having little stretches where it's uh, pretty dead, and then all at once, bam! It just uh, blows up on you. They, they, a fish must be moving in and out. Th this hole, we've probably caught in the tournament and in practice. We've probably caught over a hundred bass in here. Uh, it, this hole is, is about two acres long in a little lake, and I think they're just sitting down in that 10 foot of water whenever they decide to get get ready to eat. They move up on the flat and, you know, find a crab or a little bait fish or something. So a lot of times these little spots, these little points and stuff that I'm fishing, they reload real good with fish. Scott, you were fishing, of course, across the pond from your dad yesterday, and your dad was telling us, man, he said, I need the lure that Scott is fishing with. If I had that lure, I could catch those fish. Now, was he right? If he'd had that, would he be in the top five as well? Well, you know, I, I really believe it's not the color or the vibration of this bait. I'm throwing a different one than he was throwing, but my partners, uh, both three days in the tournament, they all caught just as many fish or had just as many hits as I did, and they were throwing different colors and different sizes. I, I think it's more of a reaction strike, and so when this bait comes flying by their face, they're not having enough time to look at it and decide what color it is or anything. They're just eating it. And, you know, I think it's mainly the reason I'm doing a little bit better. I, I've, I've figured out some little places in here where they're hanging. Well, Scott, uh, let me ask you one more thing about your dad. I know it's a great advantage to have a great angler like Roland as your father, but it's also tough growing up sort of in the shadow of someone like that. You're coming into your own, especially today, as one of the top professional anglers in America. What do people need to look for in you? What makes you different from anyone else who's out there working today? Well, you know, I've, I've grown up with dad fishing his whole life, and I've, I've been to a lot of different bodies of water, and I've seen different styles of fishing, and I feel like I'm I'm fairly versatile, you know, there's a lot of people that are known for doing certain things and, and I try to mainly uh, key on learning every different bait possible and, and getting as good as I can on all of them. All right. Well, talk to you. Talk to us a, a little bit about that big fish you have. We understand you got a whopper in there. Yeah, I, the fish hit, it was the second fish I caught this morning and like I said, I caught a four pound redfish yesterday and that fish hit and it didn't jump really at first. and. I said, oh, it's got to be a redfish, and then it come up and jumped, and the mouth was just humongous on it. Just, I don't really want to tell you how big it is. I'll let you see when we get there, but it's a huge one. Biggest one I've caught in a whole week of fishing up here. See you at the weigh-in, Scott. Thank you. All right, we're going to have an exciting weigh-in. Well, this it's going to be great. Like, I want to see that fish. You betcha. You probably will. I think I will. <laughs> Well, things have been fast and furious for Scott Martin. This is the other end of the spectrum here. Slow, deliberate, takes so much patience to do what Rob Kilby's been doing today. And I hope everybody understands that all of our competitors are separated from each other. They have no idea what the other fisherman is doing. So for all Rob knows, he is uh, winning the battle and he is on his way to a <laughs> good string of fish. It'll help. Made me work way, way too hard for it, though. Scott's gonna win it. He's only come back early each day when he caught him, so. 
There's a fish right there. That's a big one, too, son. If that's a bass, this is gonna help right here. That's a bass. That's a good one. Come on, baby. Stay buttoned up. Come on. 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 Oh, barely hooked. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Don't do it. Don't do it. Barely hooked. Yes. It ain't over, son. The fat woman ain't singing. I got six minutes. Come on, God. Give it to me. Come on. Come on. Come on, Big Daddy. I know you're down there. Give me one more bite. Come on. Never quit, boys. Never quit. Five minutes. I'm gonna push it down to this Timex on a second. Don't let me down Timex. I'm about 15 seconds off the official watch. That helped. <laughs> I'm tired of fishing. God, the mighty, get on it, baby. Oh, he hit it. Oh, man, I got a bite. I got a bite. I got a bite. Man, he hit it. I mean, he really hit it. Come on, get it, baby. Three minutes. Three minutes. Last cast. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Y'all don't let me down. Mm, 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 mm. I'd like to pull it off right there. We better let them eat, boys. That's all the time we got for today's show. Let's do it. Let's drop them down. We got to go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We got to go. Come on. Well, in case you were wondering whether Gerald Swindle gets a little calm and mellow at the end of the day, I think that's your answer right there. What a guy. What energy. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by U.S. Bank. Your needs, our tools. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. By Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans. And by the Visa Challenge, the Visa $2 million challenge. And as you watch today's weigh-in, please be aware that we have no losers here. These guys beat at least 170 other fishermen getting to this day. And our shootout weigh-in already has shot down Kim Carver and has Marty Stone in the lead with Swindell at the scale. 3-9 is what he's looking for. Looking at his buddy. There is fish number four. One pound, eight ounces, need another one. one That'd more. be fish number all. <laughs> number fish all. number all. Eight. Hey, how about it? A big hand for Gerald Swindle. One of the most exciting guys in the sport of bass fishing. Right there, Gerald Swindle. What a great guy. Three guys left in the quest for the $100,000 first prize. Rob Kilby has weighed in four fish so far. Rob, you need a pound, six, you need two pounds even. Two even. A pound, 16 ounces. That's what it's going to take to take <laughs> two, the lead. Two pounds even, Tommy. Two <laughs> even will put Rob Kilby in the lead. Oh, Good, it's solid keeper, oh, but I'm man. not sure this fish weighs one pound, 12 ounces. Oh, man. Another great effort, just a little bit short. Let's hear it for Rob Kilby. Rob Kilby from Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. There they are. Two men left. Championship day. Walmart FLW Tour event here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Marty Stone has already weighed in a limit of fish. Eight pounds, four ounces. If Scott Martin can't bring up one pound, 12 ounces, excuse me, one pound, 13 ounces, no, 12 ounces, Marty Stone will win the $100,000 first prize. Come on up here, Marty. If Scott can bring up one pound, 12 ounces, Scott Martin will be your champion. You ready for this, Marty? <laughs> Man, I've been waiting for four days. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it, he says. Scott's fixing to show us what he's got. There it is right there. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> There's your champion. Just a formality now. Let's weigh them in. Make it legal. 
<laughs> Grab yourself a picture. Just to make it official, Scott, two fish, both alive, seven pounds, two ounces. Scott Martin, your champion right there. There's your buddy right there. Let's hear it for him. What a job all week long. Another guy who's made the run, paid his dues all week. Co-angler of the year last year. One of the leaders now for angler of the year on the Walmart FLW Tour. You're the man who is on the map now. What a great way to get a career kick started. It was just unbelievable. You know, like they were saying, we made that long run. It was so, so much of an adrenaline rush when you get over there. And that big fish was the second one I put in the live well today. And uh, I, I was just uh, freaking out. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It's the biggest one I've seen in the whole week of practice. And I, I, I don't know what it exactly weighed, but I, I don't think there's been that many fish weighed in that big. I thought it was a redfish at first, and it didn't jump. And then it got almost to the boat, and it came up and showed its mouth. And I, I was just about fell out of the boat. I don't know what. Oh, my goodness gracious. Woo! Great times today that none better than Scott Martin's big fish. Obviously, our Fuji flashback. Folks, be this with us again for here. our next Ever. event, Lake Murray in South Carolina. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of Go Network, go.com.